Teams tries to figure out his map. He looks at his mountain range, at his coastline, his kingdoms and empires that are located there, but uh, he cannot figure out how the politics of his world should look like. He tries and tries again and again, but nothing seems to work. James is just about to give up, but fortunately, George R. R. Martin is here to help young James. With his intricate plots and realistic geopolitics, he dives with James into the ocean of geographical dependencies. He shows young James all the general rules and suddenly everything clicks for James. Now his maps are far more suited for political plots. Geographical politics, or politics of map if you like, is a simple and yet very complex issue. To explain it in a broad sense, you take a geographical map and slap on top of it a political map. But for both of those layers to make sense, well, let's say very few actually know how to do it in a fictional setting. Good geopolitics is actually extremely rare in fantasy. Most fantastical universes just slaps a map that looks cool and draw borders that tightly fit a certain place. Oftentimes they just copy our world, especially Europe. They do a couple of changes to the layout of the terrain and that's it. Even the fictional fantastical countries that are erected are just fantasy slash insert European country. To make a proper geopolitical environment, you need to take into account a lot of factors. Because geography, which is a part of the name of geopolitics, is one of many factors that determine other sub-factors that comes first before a creation of a nation. One of those sub-factors are people. Different cultures and ethnicities that makes up a place. They are a vital part of forming governments and other political entities. And what people live in a certain place are vastly determined by other factors, like climate, the biome, the fertile ground, moisture, types of animals that are present. Or other more subjective factors, like spiritual and religious landmarks, the presence of a luxurious mineral. Or if your world have magic, then some magically infused place. If you add other species to your fantastical universe, then they will also play a big factor in forming nations. But the functions of government are highly determined by two major factors, geography and climate. The question is, why geography has such a big impact on politics of a region? Because it can impact the wealth and prosperity of a country. Fertile ground and good climate that is very beneficial for plentiful crops and big herds of farming animals highly influence the wealth, expansion, development and growth of a nation. In modern days, we tend to forget how critically important food was back in the day. Now the food is plentiful and extremely cheap and easy to access compared to even 100 or 200 years ago, not to mention 500 or 1000 years ago. That is why when you look at any historical maps and even some modern maps, you can see that the biggest density of populations are located either in the coastline where it's easy to fish for food and trade, or near big rivers where the soil is the most fertile and easy to water. Ideally, both. Like we can see with Egypt, where the vast majority of people, even till this day, still lives near the most farmable and connected lands. You can take any geographical map of a country, put the map of the population density next to it, and you will very quickly see what I mean. Just look at this map of Spain, for example. When you look at the density of population on the right and map it out on the geographical map on the left, you will see that the population density reflects that. The biggest density hubs are located in the coastlines and those that are deeper inland are located near big rivers with fertile flatlands around. The only outlier here is the capital city of Madrid which have big density of population mostly because of its political and administrative importance and also because the capital is roughly in the middle of the country, connecting it very well. You can pick any two maps like this and you will see that they will almost always reflect that. And the only time something will not fit the rule of fertile ground or coastline will be due to religious or administrative importance. Sometimes the borders might look very strange and make no sense at first glance, but when you investigate the map from the geographical perspective, suddenly it will make sense. 
There is this weird borderline between Thailand and Burma that, that goes along this extremely narrow peninsula. And it was always very weird for me because in the case of war, both countries will have extremely easy to cut off parts of the other country and separate them. But when I switch to geographical map, suddenly it makes perfect sense. The border goes along a mountain range, a very difficult geographical obstacle. And if you compare it to some very straight borders of some African countries, you know why they look like this till this day. It's very difficult to have wibbly wobbly borders when they are located in a fucking desert. And before someone will point it out in the comments, yes, I am aware that these borders are a leftover of the post-colonial agreements. But it does not change the fact that they still are this way till this day and no one really wants to change it. It's hard to enforce very strict borders in a literal ocean of sand. Also, sometimes you get some very, very strange borderlines. If someone can please explain to me what is this mess of a borderline in this area of Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, I'll be thankful because I have no clue what is going on here. But forming of borders are not the only thing that geographical layouts affect. Political relations are yet another big factor, especially in low technology settings, which most fantasy settings are. Geography is more important than anything then. Of course, magic can circumvent that, that is why in my fantasy world I avoid teleportation and portal magic like Hellfire. When I add this type of magic, I am very, very careful about the implications and limitations of such power. Mountains and rivers form natural borders. Kingdoms in low technology settings especially rely on those things. The logistics of moving an army or supplies through them is super difficult. That is why historians gush when talking about Hannibal moving his armies through the Alps, because at that time it was an incredible feat of logistics to move an entire army, with elephants no less, through a mountain range. Coastline and especially big open waters, like seas and oceans, are a lifeblood for nations. Without planes, sea and oceans are the most effective way to transport supplies, and that is why coastlines usually determine the wealth of a nation in a fantasy setting. Good port cities that are difficult to attack from the sea and are a big trading hubs are usually places that are not only rich in terms of wealth, but also more technologically advanced, since they benefit from the exchange of ideas and supplies due to the fact that trade attracts merchants and other travelers from other cultures and improve the exchange of ideas. But geography also affects the defensiveness and geopolitical situation of a country. It would take me hours to go into every single minute detail of this, so instead I will provide you with a real-life historical example. Since I am a big history nerd, and the country that I know the most of in terms of history is Poland, my home country. The geographical localization of Poland is very peculiar, because it is perfectly in the middle between the Western culture and the Eastern Slavic cultures. Poland itself being an Slavic culture is technically more inclined to the East, but since the West was always more advanced and always a bigger threat, then we are one of the few Slavic countries that always leaned to the West. You can see that Poland and also the Czech Republic and Slovakia are the only Slavic countries that are Catholic. All the rest are Orthodox, with the exception of Croatia that are Catholic also, but for completely different reasons. Poland suffered also from many wars and invasions, more so than most countries on earth, for a single fact that we were always in the middle and were the most convenient pathway to the other side of the cultural bloc. The invasions from the west usually came from one specific side, as in the south there is a mountain range that is very inconvenient for armies. As mentioned before, moving armies from mountains is a logistical nightmare. But from the east, on the other hand, Poland was attacked from many directions, because the area is far more flat and more open. The mountain range in the south goes further south, exposing the eastern side of the country for more angles of attacks. That is why we had far more wars in the east than from the west, being attacked from both northeast, east and southeast. The north is also not an exception. The Baltic Sea is a very closed water bank, having only a very small and tiny passageway near Denmark, 
effectively making Denmark and Sweden the sole controller of the water traffic outside of the Baltic Sea. However, we had almost no wars coming from the south, because the mountain range was always a natural block for armies to get through. I think that example illustrates the most in terms of how a mapping of a country affects its vulnerabilities or potential of wealth creation. Creating nations and kingdoms is always fun if you think about all of those things. However, that also makes it more difficult because now, especially if you started doing a world building with the thought of, you know, I will create this kingdom and that empire and this will be the cultures that exist within it and this will be the species that live within it, then you need to be very careful when you will be drawing the borders because you need to make this make sense within the geography that you already have. It is, of course, much easier if you start with geography, if you don't have anything in mind first, you just start making your map. And then when you finish making your map, you start drawing, you know, natural borders that would make sense based on the geography that is happening. That way, that will make it more natural, right? It will be inserted in a more natural way. But that is all for today. I hope that you found value in this video and that will help you create better maps and better politics within your maps. And if you struggle with writing, if you struggle with your world building, you can find help with my Discord server, which is in the description called the Writer's Guild. You can join the Writer's Guild. And if you have any struggle, if you want to connect with people with, that have similar interests, it's, it's very small right now, but it will blow up at some point, I, I hope. <laughs> but that's all for today. I want to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. And I hope that you will have a great day and a great Christmas holiday.